podcast. In the last podcast, we uh, started on my personalized approach. This is what I have uh, been doing, what I've been working on, what I feel uh, sort of works, and where some things work, some things don't work. I call it my personalized approach to addictions process. Pata, pata, you know. And uh, in the last podcast, we went through uh, the first five. So, uh, turn back or not, the list, reasons to turn back, establishment of a support group, uh, personification of it, one of my favorites, the werewolf, um, and the intensity, frequency, scale. I want to go right into number six the actual specific methods that I have come up with for dealing with my own cravings. So I call this some methods of dealing with it or smod we, you know. So A, and this is the best. This is the most recommended. Uh, this is A is RCE, rechanneling of energy. Um, as I said last week, it's similar to, Fro uh, to Freud's uh, ego defense mechanism of sublimation. Rechanneling the energy is very important because it's, it's a very vital energy. And um, uh, as I said in the, in the last podcast, uh, one of the ways for me is writing. Uh, uh, and now, these podcasts, it's rechanneling energy into uh, more productive and uh, uh, creative outlets. Uh, it also, a lot of people keep saying, go for a walk. You know, uh, walking is good, exercise is good. I, I love walking, but, you know, I won't go to a gym or anything, you know? And movies! I've mentioned movies. I saw Rocket Man. I've seen other movies. I do watch a lot of movies, you know? Um, I read, you know? Uh, so these are all um, channels, rechanneling of uh, addictive energy into more uh, positive outlets. Now, let's get to one that we hardly talked about before. This is B, and this is very controversial. Control burn, CB, in, in my system, is going back to an earlier but less dangerous for one, you know, uh, addiction. So, for me, drinking again was actually a controlled burn, you know, because it helped me to a certain degree deal with the current substance. The, the one that I regard as, this is the real danger for me right now. Control burn comes from the idea of uh, trying to control forest fires. And you know what they do? They set fires. They have a little thingy that actually sets fires because they want to control the direction, you know? So you're, you're setting fire to control the direction. But as people have pointed out to me, that if the wind shifts, you know, cities burn down, and somebody else, my, my neighbor said, it's a, it's a slippery slope, you know, <laughs> once you start, you know, with one thing, it's going to lead to something else. And that's where it ended up, you know. Eight weeks ago, uh, we got to the point where the drinking would always lead to the other stuff, you know. So the drinking had to go, you know. Uh, now, uh, in my system, I call um, uh, CB, control burns. It's also known as uh, playing with fire, PWF. Uh, the next stage of it for me was uh, how do you control the controlled burn? And somebody asked me that when I was talking about my system a few weeks ago, and I'm, I don't know yet. <laughs> it's a work in progress. <laughs> I kind of, I've kind of came up, there's another term, I call it now burning up the burn. BB, you know? Uh, and once the burn is, uh, the controlled burn is burnt up, you can't go back to it. So I'll, I'll talk about another one. Uh, I had, a, I've mentioned previously that I also have had gambling addictions. And I have been clean of gambling for 15 years. However, over the last um, few months, I, uh, you know, maybe over the last eight months or so, I have a couple of times brought back, gone gambling, when the cravings for the uh, other substance, the one I really, really want to do, when the cravings for that are very strong, what I would do is I went to a casino. And a couple of times, 
I was okay. I went there and uh, I gambled for three or four hours. Once I left, I was down 100 bucks. Once I left, I was up 100 bucks. And it was very hard walking out, you know? Uh, but when I'm in the casino, uh, I'm in a different high. And I'm so high that if someone was to offer me uh, a line of that other substance, I'd be like, going, no, thank you. I'm good. <laughs> uh, but the hard part with that is to be able to walk out. And I was able to. I was quite proud of myself. Um, usually I don't talk to people in casinos. but uh, And the only conversation that you have with people, uh, and this is slot machines, the only conversation is somebody will say, oh, don't go to that machine. It's not paying off well. <laughs> you know, or, you know, or I just won a lot of money on that. You know, Don't go to that one. So somebody will offer what they think is. And it's all random, of course, anyway. In, in, in Skinner's term, it's variable ratio reinforcement. You know? So all of that, you know, uh, this machine is paying off. This machine is good this machine is bad, that's nonsense, you know, that's, it's all random. But anyway, um, uh, 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 this guy started talking to me at the next machine, and he says, uh, you know, uh, his marriage collapsed because of this. He said, you know, I gamble so much, my wife left me, we had to sell the house, and uh, he said, uh, oh, I just wish I had all the money in the world, because if I had all the money in the world, I would be here all the time. And you know, those things are 24 hours. They're 24 hours, you know? So that guy would be there 24 hours a day you know? because he just wants that high. You know? Now, when I came back to gambling as a control burn, I wasn't quite at his level. I came back to it to control. The other. And like I said, it did work up to a point. You know? And it took away some of the cravings for the other thing. And I left after four or five hours, down 100 bucks, up 100 bucks. And I, and I was like, going, oh, I'm not, I don't, I'm not really having cravings for the other stuff. I can just go home and spend time with my cat and do some reading and uh, do some writing. And you know, it, it drained it. However, you know, uh, after two or three visits, they started to get longer. <laughs> and um, I used the control burn. I had a falling out with my with a, with a friend, the guy who uh, suggested the uh, the dog analogy, which turned into the werewolf thing. You know, uh, I had a bit of a falling out with him, and we had you know um, uh, we had some conflict, and we stopped speaking to each other. And after I left him, I went straight to a casino, and. Had I not done that, I probably would have gone and done the substance in question. Uh, and it kind of worked, you know. I went to a casino, and I was there for some hours. And at this point, there was no controlling. There was just, just feeding machine money as much as I could access from my bank account, you know. And that's uh, how it was at the end of my, uh, 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 the, you know, the, the high point of my gambling, you know, addiction. Uh, was that whatever money I had, I'd put it in. Whatever I could access from my bank account, I'd put it in. And then I would have to leave. And I got to that point. I just accessed the money. And, um, and the analogy I've used for this is, I'm calling it, it's sort of like, you know how an airbag in a car, you know? And this happened, uh, a car, my mother's car, we gave it to uh, uh, my cousin's daughter, and she was in an accident two weeks after she got the car. And uh, fortunately, she was not hurt, you know? The car was written off, but the airbag went off and the airbag saved her, you know? Otherwise, she could have been injured. The airbag went off, but once the airbag went off and the car isn't worth a lot, you know? So uh, they, won't, they won't fix the car. They're, they're, you know, the car has been written off, you know? You can't use the car anymore. So that airbag did its job. It saved my, uh, uh, my relative, you know? Uh, she was not injured, but the car's gone. The airbag's gone, you know? So once you use it, it's gone. That's one of the ways in which um, control burns get used up. So I call that, you know, BB, burning up the burn. So you know something? The uh, casino controlled burn is gone. The drinking controlled burn is gone because drinking was now leading to the other substance almost every time. So all the controlled burns are gone. Now, everybody told me this is not a good idea, you know? Uh, it's not a good idea to try to replace one addiction with another. Um, but, you know, uh, I wanted to try it for myself, you know? Uh, I wanted to see how. I wanted to actually experiment, and, and to a certain degree, it worked.
This is fine. I'm okay with the events that are unfolding currently. That's okay. Things are gonna be okay. Control burns are the controversial one, and I don't recommend it, by the way, for anybody. Please um, realize I'm not suggesting anyone substitute one addiction for another. You know? This is something that I tried for myself just to see. You know? <laughs> and uh, and um, it worked up to a point. I mean, when I was really, really desperate, you know, uh, to a point the drinking and the casinos worked up to a point, but then I had to get rid of them, you know, because they, they became, uh, you know, dangerous in themselves, you know, uh, and then they led to the other thing. C, now this is totems, symbols, etc. It's sort of like um, higher power-ish stuff, but it's not really higher power. You need a small object, potentially heavy, something you can have on you all the time that like, no one else like knows. Like a coin? No, it needs to be more unique than that. Like, this is a loaded die. I can't let you touch it, that would defeat the purpose. See, only I know the balance and the weight of this particular loaded die. I do have a Bast the Cat Goddess figurine, you know? And I do have uh, a Laughing Buddha, and I have a Seated Buddha. Um, I, uh, I have the Silver Coins, which I talked about last week, because silver, silver is bad for wheels. I have a chair, and I call it my ego chair, because I sit in it to battle, you know? Uh, so it's my, it's my ego chair, it's a leather chair by the window. So I sit in that and I have my figurines and I have my bast and I have my Coca-Cola and I battle the werewolf one minute at a time, one hour at a time. I sit there, I write there too sometimes, you know, with my laptop. Uh, as I said, this is an optional one. This is, uh, um, I mean, to me, cats are very powerful, as you know from previous podcasts, you know, They're, and uh, cat energy is important to me. So the cat goddess, I'm not going to pray to a cat goddess. I don't believe there's an actual cat goddess somewhere that is going to help me, you know? I just have this an energy that appeals to me that I, you know, that gives me some strength, you know? So I have the cat goddess there, I have the Buddha. Now, I have a story. I think I told this to my student, you know, of all the, you know, kind of organized religions, and I'm, uh, I'm not big into any form of organized stuff, but um, uh, a little bit uh, Buddhism has sort of appealed to me on and off over the years, and I've looked, I've, I've looked at the Four Noble Truths and the, you know, Eightfold Path and all of that stuff, you know, you know and uh, uh, suffering comes from desire and we have overcoming suffering and all of that stuff. I looked at it, you know, uh, and as I said, I keep a Buddha there. But last year, um, I was driving out to my country house, and oh, one thing I want to make clear, and I, I was a little bit. You know, it was sunny, I was in a convertible, and it was a little bit, you know, I was feeling a little tired, but I was not on any substance. And that's another point I want to make. Uh, all you junkies out there, be responsible junkies. You know, don't drink and drive, and I've been very careful a bit. You know, I don't take Uber, but cabs. But uh, that day, uh, I was clean. You know, I'd been on a binge maybe four days before, you know, and I'd been with my parents after that, and I was just a little tired, and I was going out to the, um, you know, so um, uh, I was not on anything at all. I'm driving along Brantford, Ontario, and on my left hand side, you know, left, it's a left hand path, you know, I, on my left hand side, I kind of see. The Buddha. <laughs> it's kind of like this projection. This, uh, this. Uh, uh, not. I wouldn't even call it a. It's not an hallucination. It's just kind of a, like a waking dream. I was awake, but it was like a, a, a waking image of the Buddha. He held out something in his left hand, and he holds out this thing, and it's blue, and it's kind of there's a light, there's an energy radiating from it, and he didn't say anything to me, but I kind of sensed that this you know, energy was saying to me, look, follow my path, you know, uh, this will release you. This will, this will take away your struggles. And you know what I did? I, you know, I, I told him to f off. I go f off, Buddha, you know? Uh, I'm like, you know, <laughs> I was like, you know, I'm not taking this shit. I'm not following even your path. I admire your path. It worked for you. Uh, all of that stuff. But I am going to do this on my own. Come with me, you know? And there's actually a book from the 70s, there was a guy who wrote a book called If You Meet the Buddha on the Road, Kill Him! You know? Because it's a false image. <laughs> you gotta do it for yourself. 
It's through meditation, you know? Yeah, it's not, it's, you don't see the Buddha in, in uh, Brantford telling you some shit, you know? That's, you don't follow that shit, you know? You follow your path, you know? So I have told the Buddha to F off. You know? uh, but yeah, as I said, it was, it, it was symbolic. I don't take any of, see, when you're talking about this kind of symbols, well, that's why I call it my, my step. TSC, totem symbols, etc. These are symbols, you know? Don't take it literally. That wasn't the Buddha. That wasn't Siddhartha that came to me, you know? That was my unconscious, my projections, my stuff. I think they're useful to have. And as I said, we got Bass, we got, you know, uh, Buddha. Uh, now, number D, this is any uh, approach. This is uh, therapeutic approaches. And there are five perspectives in psychology, psychoanalysis, behaviorism, cognition, all of those, you know. Um, so um, you can see therapists. Uh, I do a bit of stuff on my own. I do have an analyst, but he is Jungian. So we talk about uh, dreams and the unconscious and the shadow and the projections. So I call it dream analysis because that's very important for me. Dream analysis. And I've got a bit of, you know, uh, self-reinforcement. You know, remember I was talking about uh, visualizing stuff and, you know, monitoring thoughts and meditation. And uh, even with meditation, I kind of do it on my own. This is actually stuff directly from uh, traditional psychology, and I'm not going to go into it here. I mean, we might do another podcast on it sometime. I'll go through the five perspectives, you know. And the last one, I have a very good doctor, you know. So uh, physical tests, you know. Uh, medical opinions. This is, you know, checking the blood pressure. She's always warning me. And she goes, yeah, she knows about my addiction. And she's always warning me. And she goes, you know, when you read in the paper about some celebrity who has a heart attack, celebrity in the 50s or 60s, it's usually a particular substance, a white stuff, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and she, she's like going, be very careful. She says, you know, you know, I'm going, Okay, thank you, doctor. You know, uh, and, but so far, blood pressure was up a bit. It's down, and I, and I stopped drinking. And my next test, uh, you know, in a couple of weeks, let's see what the results are. But it's good to monitor these things, you know. So that's the physical, medical stuff. So that's my patap. You know, as I said, some of the steps are gone. You know, I'm not recommending anyone use this, by the way. You know, this is just my and um, if. 12 steps and other traditional clinical approaches don't work for you, what I suggest is try to come up with your own if you can, you know? Uh, I have, I've kind of seen what works and what doesn't, you know? Um, and that's it for today. We're out of time. So, uh, from the Nutty Professor, you know? Uh, stay clean if you want to stay clean, you know? See you next week. Bye.